dosimetry. Very interesting word in uh, nuclear conversations. There are many types of measurements used in dose assumptions, in dose estimating. And the better the estimate, the more accurate the estimate, the better we understand the effects of something. So this dose idea, dosage idea. Now, this ties into biological uptake. Inhaling air, breathing in and out 24 hours a day exposes your lung to particulate hazards. Recent decade, EPA has focused very much on particle size conversations. This is hugely important. The second aspect of the conversation is what are those particles? And by particles, I mean molecules and whatever floating, you know, the little air that the moisture, humidity in the air carries particles. The air itself carries particles. You can go look that <laughs> up yourself. So breathing in and out is a form of dosimetry. It's why inhalants work. You're dosing yourself. Inside of that dose is a biological uptake path, how those chemicals move through your body. When you eat and digest something, all of those minerals, the elements, the chemicals, your body tries to unbind them, make them into something they can use, or excrete them in your waste, excrete them through your sweat glands even, excrete these things through, yes, your normal blowing your nose. The hairs, those fine hairs up in your sinuses are part of the filters to help you be able to breathe in this world, although we've pretty much evolved out of the uh, huge hairy proboscises. But I could grow a mustache. So biological uptake. They talk about biological half-lives, how long something is in your body, because this is mineral studies. This is like the study of iodine. People with iodine deficiencies tend to get goiter. People in nuclear fallout areas tend to get what looks like goiter. There is a confluence of events there. One is related to the other. Both of them are thyroid physics. So we put iodine in salt because Iodine is hard to find in the natural world, and people won't get enough of it. And by flooding your body with good iodine, it reduces your risk of radiological contamination from the air or milk from entering your body and being absorbed and kept in your body for a long period of time because there is a biological half-life for the minerals your body takes up. Over our lifetimes, our body replaces itself many times over. Your skin sheds constantly. <laughs> Other parts of you shed constantly. You're just not aware. Your bones are shedding as we speak, and they're regrowing that shed. These minerals are being replaced slowly over time, for the most part, for some part, for small parts and big parts, but it's not absolute, so there's more to the story. That's dosimetry. That's a conversation about it. It's where how dioxins are introduced into the environment around you. This isn't just about nuclear waste. It's about that tailings pond that leached into the drinking water and all the heavy metals that became available, biologically available to anything in, on, or around or using that water. This is how these systems work, these massive earth systems. This is why it takes global treaties, conspiracies some people call them, in order to manage these aspects of the world around us. Constraints placed upon industry for the human good global, it's not a, it's how shit works. <laughs>